Hi and welcome to The Gateway. I'm so excited to share this month's video with you. Now it's a little bit different this month. You're hearing a voiceover from me and I kind of like to do things a little bit differently just to mix it up a little bit. This month what I've decided to share with you is something that I recorded for a five-day retreat that I recently ran in Byron Bay. And it's often used when we've got parts of ourselves that want to make a new decision, that want to go in a new direction, and parts of ourselves that don't, where we're scared, we're nervous, we don't feel like we've got what it takes, we're not sure that we're going to be the success that we really want to be. So what I've recorded for you is a video of me actually doing what's called parts integration on a set of stairs. Now this is a neuro-linguistic programming technique that I really encourage you guys to have a really good look at and then take into your own life and use any time when you feel stuck because part of you wants more and part of you doesn't. Part of you wants a new car but part of you doesn't. Part of you wants a new business or a new job or a new relationship and part of you doesn't. I hope you really enjoy this month's video and I can't wait to hear your comments on the forum. Enjoy. I'll see you on the stairs. So here's what I want to show you. I want to give you a tool that you can pop into your kit bag that you can use anytime you want to. Because here's the real reality of what happens to us as humans. We get these incredible ideas, we get these amazing inspirations, we get these fantastic opportunities that come our way. And then within minutes or sometimes even seconds, we have the contrast of doubt, the contrast of, I'm not gonna be good enough, this isn't gonna work. What if I can't pull it off? What if nobody likes what I've got to offer? What if it's never gonna work? All those sorts of thoughts enter into our mind to, I guess, on one hand to cause us to question how committed we are to pursuing this new opportunity and idea versus whether we really would prefer to take the easy way out or stay with the status quo. Because here's what goes on from a mental and a neurological perspective. Consciously, we get this opportunity or this desire or this idea. Unconsciously, there's a part of the brain, it's the primal part of the brain, and it doesn't have, the more, it doesn't have a greater maturity level than a seven-year-old child. So that part of us is designed to keep us safe. That part of us was designed right, you know, right in the very beginning of humanity, that if the saber-toothed tiger, and I know you've heard this before, but if the saber-toothed tiger comes out to grab us, then we get the old fight or flight response. But also, even if the saber-toothed tiger isn't what's a threat, um, it causes us to be, it, it, its whole desire for us is to be protected and to keep us safe and to prevent, um, overwhelm or change. That's where the doubting thoughts actually come from. So our job is to be able to accept that that's part of who we are. It's part of how we're actually wired neurologically. It's why it happens to every single human being. And then to work out how we can work with that rather than doing what we always do as humans is resist it and say, I don't wanna, I don't wanna look at that negativity. That's not who I am. I'm gonna be a positive person. I'm gonna focus on the future. I'm gonna focus on what I really want. That's all well and good, and I definitely encourage you to do that. But the shadow side, that, that immature, negative side, is actually designed for a reason. It's not a mistake. In fact, no part of you is a mistake. No thought, no desire, no appearance, no internal or external is a mistake. You, in and of yourself, are completely whole and perfect. So let's take advantage of what we've been born with, what we've been given as humans. And again, not one of us is different. So let's take advantage of that and learn how to use it in a way that's productive rather than resisting it. Because what we know is whatever we resist persists. And we don't want to do that. Let's not have this constant source of doubt follow us right the way through our journey of progression. Let's nail it and deal with it now so that then we can go on to create that incredible business model with all of those fabulous products inside of it with nothing other than inspiration, potency and potentiality. Here's the tool. It's super easy. This is a tool that we use in neuro-linguistic programming and it's called parts integration. But I've developed it and adapted it a little bit more so that it can be done really, really simply and really, really easily and you can do it even when you're in the car. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to bring both of your hands out in front of you. And I want you to, and I'm gonna do it with you live so that you can actually see what it looks like. 
What I want you to do is I want you to bring the negative thought, the questioning part, the part of you that says, well, I can't do it, or I'm not good enough, or this won't work. I want you to bring that negative thought now out of here and place it onto your hand. Now, if you're right-handed, I want you to bring it out onto your left hand, your non-dominant hand. If you are left-handed, I want you to bring it out onto your right hand, which would be your non-dominant hand. The negative thought must always sit on the non-dominant hand. Just remember that. So here I have this negative thought. Now let me try and get one up for you so that I can participate in this for you live. Um, okay, cool, got one. What if I'm not good enough? So I'm gonna bring that out and pop that on my left hand. Now the next step is for you to get a full sensory experience of that negative thought. What does it look like? What does it feel like? How heavy is it? Does it have a texture to it? What does it sound like? So get a full sensory experience of it. Okay, so you can even see my hand now starting to move and I'm not even doing that deliberately because for me, that negative thought is quite rounded and it's lumpy and it's sitting right in the middle of my hand, not on the tips of my fingers or the back of my palm, it's right in the middle of my hand. And it's kind of like this lumpy kind of cauliflower looking thing so you can even see my hand now and I'm not doing that so my hands kind of molding to the shape of that negative thought but it's lumpy and it's ugly actually it's it's got this kind of chunky look about it now let me tell you something all of this is imagined but so are your doubts and so are your fears they all live between your two ears and so does the um, the visions and the experience that you get from this sensory experience that also lives between your two ears. But what we're doing is we're taking it out of here and bringing it outside of you so that you can associate with it and begin and engage in a conversation with it. And that's what we're about to do now. So once we've got a full sensory experience, mine's lumpy, it looks kind of cauliflowerish. it's round and it's sitting in the center of my hand and I can tell you it's actually quite heavy. I'm feeling a strain down through here in my arm. So it has weight to it and if I was to ask it if it reminds me of somebody, does it remind me of anybody in my life? And absolutely, yes, it does. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who that is, but it reminds me of somebody. It's got a familiarity to me. And it's, um, yeah, it's heavy. So, all right, so there it is. And, 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 and I don't know, but you, if you can see my hand, it's gone like a full cup now because now I'm trying to really hold on to it because it's actually getting quite heavy in my arm. So that's the negative thought. Now, I want to um, engage with that negative thought. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask this negative thought what its purpose is. Why it, why it exists, why is it presenting itself for me? Because negative thoughts only ever present themselves when there's something for you to get, something for you to learn or something to, for you to pay attention to. Because here's the thing, if we don't pay attention, we will pay with pain, make no mistake. And that pain will either come in the form of zero success or illness. Now you know, you know, when we don't pay attention to our stress or we don't pay attention to what's going on for us, somehow it comes back to have a ramification. And that's because this part of us will not go unheard. It will not go unaccepted because its job is your protection no matter what. And sometimes it will give you a cold, it will give you a virus, it will give you a flu or worse, it will put you flat on your back in hospital. So this part of us will not go unacknowledged. Make no mistake about it. Acknowledge it early, clean it up so that then you can move forward. But by not acknowledging it and resisting it, pretending it's not there, it will find its voice. This is kind of like the innate intelligence of humanity. It eventually, it begins with a whisper. It begins with a sensation of I'm not good enough. But I tell you what, but if it goes un unacknowledged, it lands up screaming at you. So let's find out what its purpose is. What's it trying to tell me? Now the way to do this is to constantly ask this negative aspect of ourselves, what's its purpose? Why is it doing what it's doing? But to always be moving upwards, going higher, rather than swimming around in the mess of the negativity, because there's always a grand purpose for everything that occurs between our two ears and within our physiology. There's always a grander purpose. No part of you wants to fail. No part of you wants you to fail. All parts of you, 
want you to be an amazing success and in pursuit of expansion. Sometimes they just don't quite know how to get you there. So let's go through this process. So here I am looking at my big cauliflower and it's feeling quite heavy and it reminds me of this particular person and it has a sensation of, of, of heavy sadness and disappointment to it. So I just want to find out from it now. So tell me, so, so what, what purpose, what, what's your purpose? Why are you here? Why are you trying to tell me something? And then you be still and you allow the answer to come because it will come like that. And instantly I've got for my protection. I want you to be safe. I don't want you to be at risk. I want you to be safe. I get it. For what purpose do you not want me to be at risk? For what purpose do you want to protect me? And now be still and wait for the answer. Because that's what's safe for you. Got it. Safe for what purpose? Now, there's a time that you might find that you just keep looping between safe and protected or, you know, whatever words you're coming up with. You might just keep looping around. But you must progress higher. You must keep pushing until you get higher. Because I just got protection again. But no, I, I want to know safe and protected for what purpose? Oh, because that's where I'm, that's where I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be happy. That will bring me happiness. If I feel safe and secure, that'll bring me happiness. Understand? I get it. So happy for, happy, happy for what reason? For what purpose? What's the purpose of being happy? Well, so that I can feel peaceful. And peaceful for what reason? So that I can, oh, oh gosh. So that I can contribute more. Because when I'm peaceful, I have energy. And okay, so contribution for what reason? And peace and contribution for what reason? Um, for the fulfillment of my purpose and the reason that I'm here. And for joy and for ultimate expansion. Now, I've just done that with you live, and I'm sitting here a little bit gobsmacked that a negative thought that I had was ultimately trying to communicate to me that it was, it was trying to bring me to peace of mind so that I could contribute in order to have a sensation of fulfillment and, and joy. Now, really, fulfillment and joy, you can't really get much further than that, not in the realms of humanity anyway. I mean, we can keep going to, you know, beyond the mind-body connection. We can keep going to a universal perspective where, you know, you would find yourself at the hands of or at the feet of the ultimate source. Now, for me, because I do this exercise often, sometimes I will take myself that far up in the exercise because that's really what floats my boat. And I know, because I know from the perspective of who I really am, that's really, you know, my ultimate goal is that, that, that universal and, and global connection. So now the job is, now that we've gotten that from our negative side, now the job is to go to the other side, is to go to the opposite number, the positive side. You know the part of you that actually gets excited about that new idea or that opportunity? That part. Bring that part out and pop it on your right hand. Allow it to sit on your right hand and, and now, same thing, get a full sensory experience of it. And I'm looking at that inspiration and, oh gosh, I've got goosebumps. I'm looking at that, that positive aspect of me and I can see it. It's like, it's like, it looks like feathers. To me, it has a similarity of feathers and it's very light and it's white. It's little shades of white and grey in there, but it's, it's very, very light. And does it remind me of somebody? Oh, oh gosh, yeah, oh, it does actually. It reminds me of a very dear girlfriend of mine. Now that was actually quite unexpected. So, okay, so it, it's, it's got that vision for me and it's very light and it, it has a sensation of energy buzzing. It's like this kind of electrified little fluffy feathered, beautiful concoction sitting on my hand. And yes, you can see my hand is cupping again because I don't want to lose it. I want to hold on to it. I don't want it to fall off the side of my hands. And it's sitting right smack in the middle of the palm of my hand. So now we want to do the same thing because there's no point just looking at the negative side. Let's really analyze both sides because at the moment we only have the side of the shadow side expressed. 
Now it's time to add the light side, you know, the contrast, the dark with the light. Now it's time to allow the light side to express because it's this side that's going to give us our clarity in terms of direction. So what's the purpose of this great, amazing excitement that makes me feel a little anxious? I'm a little bit anticipatory about it. I'm not quite sure how it's all going to work out, but what's the purpose? For what purpose are you here? This inspiration and this, 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 um, this idea, what are you here for? Well, I'm here for your expansion is what I'm hearing. I'm here for your expansion. I'm here for your growth. So growth and expansion for what reason? Well, for ultimate contribution. Oh, <laughs> and I'm also hearing because that's what's going to bring me closer to the ultimate connection with source. Now, from, now, that was just straight away, it went to the highest level of, of, of purpose, of, of purpose of why this experience is existing. Because I now know that ultimately this idea that I have, that I want to, you know, this business model or this, this product that I want to create is ultimately because it's going to bring me closest to my ultimate connection to source and my ultimate connection to who I am and my growth and expansion. Now, that's why I've got this idea. Now, this is the interesting part. Whatever you get out of this part of the positive analyzation, that's the reason why you must fulfill your desires. You must fulfill on your inspirations because it's not just a fleeting, fickle desire or inspiration. There is always something grander at play that when you allow yourself to ask the questions, you get the insight. So now that idea that I had for this product that I want to create, I'll tell you what, I am going full steam on it because that's going to create my greatest expansion, my growth and my ultimate connection to source. So here I have in one hand my cauliflower, in the other hand I have my feathers. Ultimately, both want for my growth, my contribution and my expansion and my joy, my peace of mind and ultimately, my connection to source. By bringing your hands together, it actually creates a little bit of a frying sensation in the mind or in the brain, and it might give you goosebumps, but you will definitely feel a merging when you bring your hands together. You'll definitely feel a sensation of merging. And now the ultimate question is, now that I know what that negative thought was there for, it was there for a reason. It was there to protect me and look after me, but ultimately its objective is for my happiness and for my growth, peace of mind and joy. That's all I want for me too. That's all the light side wants for me too. So if I have growth, expansion, contribution, peace of mind and joy, do you think that's going to help me achieve my ultimate goal on this side of being, you know, um, of contribution and, and connection to source? If I'm in a place of joy and peace of mind, do you think that'll help? Of course it will. And that's the conversation that I'm actually having with myself now where I'm able to say, I hear you. I understand what you're there for. Do you think you and you can work together to help us make this creation amazing, extraordinary and even more powerful than what it was before I'd done this exercise? And I'm sitting here in front of you getting a sensation of absolute potency, power, self-confidence, belief and strength in a way that I haven't felt Gosh, for months, this is new. This is a new experience for me. And, every t and, and I'm a fairly confident person, as you know. So every time you do this exercise, you're taking yourself to an entirely new level of creativity and potency. So give it a try. Don't hold back with this. Keep watching this part of the video if you need to so that you can practice this. I do this all the time. Every single time a negative thought rears its head, I am straight in and analyzing it. I do not allow the negative thought to fester and then hold me back later. I used to do that before I knew better. And now you know better too. Have fun. Go for it. Give it a go.